I'm in the new one. Boy, if you don't. Fire. Either means you're updating your. Oh, man. Fire. Yeah. It'll take 10 minutes. Oh. It didn't take 10 minutes. As a loose estimate. Est Fire. See, I'm not too familiar with Boogie 2988. Uh, see, I've been on YouTube for a little bit amount of time. I've seen him here and there. I'm more so familiar with... Did you drink my Mountain Dew? Let me smell your breath. Let me smell your breath. I've only seen, um, Francis. I've seen, I've heard of the, the, the cool shenanigans that have happened around the name Booger, t Boogie 298. Boog, Boogie 298. And it seems that there was a documentary that came out about him that is still relevant. I mean, just ask Boogie. Fucking, he's got, in the past month, ever since the documentary came out, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. He's made eight videos. My guess is, come on, the documentary gave him a bit of relevance when you have somebody like this. From what I gather, it's just a guy with severe emotional ineptitude. Um, he likes food, but, Today we are going to watch the documentary together, um, and I, you're, I'm going to give my clearly superior take, because everyone else is wrong and I'm right about all of these things. But first, let's watch what he has to say about his own documentary. He's the one who condoned it, right? It's over. I'm done with the drama. It was a hard watch. Um, this was my second time watching it and admitting to a lot of the things in that, whether it was the way I wasted my money or the stupid things I've done to my body or my life. Done? Wasted? Did you, is it different now? But I'm glad that I used this platform that Mike gave me to talk about this stuff and get it out of the way because I don't want to talk about it on this channel ever again. Man, I just want to be an entertainer. Booger, if I... If I watched the documentary, I mean, it was like a month ago or so, just, it was a month ago. Are things different now? You could watch the documentary back and back, but what's the, what's the point if there's no, let's see the documentary first. But what do you, but what is Boogie? Ever. What is Boogie's, uh. I mean, I just don't want to share the personal aspects of my life anymore, if I can help it. Uh, it certainly was not a good business plan. I don't recommend it. And the doc definitely points that out, as it should. Watching the chat on this thing was like watching a who's who of like nutters that have been attracted to me for years, calling me things like a pedophile and a groomer, spamming my home address, uh, hoping that people show up to my home. home. I, it, I, it, it, it's hard to talk about because just how fucking crazy some of these people are. That's what you get when you share your private and personal life. That's valid. Even if, you know, the more freaked out, whacked out, I guess this, this symbol, right? Someone like, like Boogie, right? The more whacked out, the more freaked out, the more that's going to be reflected within the community that gathers around that person, presumably. Now, granted, there's been many instances where it's contrary, right? You just have a normal person and then randos come out of nowhere and demolish them. But I mean, I can't, I haven't watched a documentary, so we, we gotta see if in Boogie's case, it's justified. Again, dry, totally dry. I think if you've watched my videos for a long time, maybe a lot of the stuff isn't news to you, especially for the people who are like obsessed with the negativity that surrounds me. But for your average person, a lot of the stuff is going to be like brand new stuff. And I, I'm curious to see what you think. A lot of people have asked about stuff that was not in the final cut of the documentary. The good news is I have plenty of clips to show you moving forward. I think I have like a stack of 20 different clips uh, that are long enough for a YouTube video that I think you'll enjoy covering some of the stuff that wasn't in the full doc. Hmm. I appreciate the transparency, and that is very important. But weren't it, a moment ago, you were kind of just like, damn, I'm ashamed. Damn, all these people can now see this vulnerable side of me that I've consented to. Uh, and now, here's more. Oh, I'm super ashamed of it, but here's more. 
you know, is... If you look at all the other stuff, like that, that right there, okay, that's fine. But there's got to be other stuff that makes that thing seem a little bit less legitimate. That's, that's, that's just my, that's what I'm guessing. So that's me. Warts and all, that's my life, that's my situation. Cool, but well, that's not you. <clears throat> Let's see if the documentary is, uh, you. So now we're going to begin that. Nearly an hour, goddamn. The Dark Sad Life of Boogie298, official documentary. It looks like a Netflix documentary by Mike Klum. Mike, by Michael Klum, by Mike Klum, by Mike Klum. Four million views by Mike oh, Klum. The biggest regret I, ha I will ever have is knowing that I had a job that every person in the world would f***ing kill for. And I f***ed it up. I'm gonna be mad about that till I go to the f***ing grave. Boogie 2988, he's a legend. He's been around for a long time. Boogie 2988. How flattering. The dark, sad life of Boogie298. Is my frame crooked? My club! Nine months? That's, like, that's awesome. Great, great shit as a documentary creator. But, from Boogie's perspective, I'm ashamed. God damn it, I, I just, all these mistakes. Here's my financial records, here's my personal content, here's my schedule, and also follow me for about a nearly a year. What did you, ex like, even if you were, if you, even if you had all your shit together, that would make any, that would make anyone look like, 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 a sh whatever it is, whatever it is the documentary is trying to make you look as. Now, granted, from all the stuff that I hear, it doesn't sound like it's the documentary that's making you look this way. Ugh. Uh, there was one girl, I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm going to. There was one girl that I dated. Yes, t what is, is this going to be a recurring theme? No, I, this is private information. I don't want to, I'm just going to make me embarrassed. Chapter one. She was underage at the time I met her. I, all right, whenever you see that, I'm just going to be like, all right, you consented, dude. She liked a lot of childish things. We're watching you in the bath. You're in the bathtub right now. I don't know if I should tell you this. Here, let me, you want to you see me bathe? You, what do you, what, okay. Something tells me this is, we're gonna be back in the bathroom. We're gonna come back soon. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Why are you talking about it like it was some Vegas bender you had like a few months, like what? That's you. If you have money, hire somebody who knows how to handle money. What's your excuse? My ex-wife. I met her in an accounting firm. Well, here's everything. If you want to see, there's $2,758 in my bank account right now. And let's see if mortgages come out yet. So tomorrow, when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of $700 and I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. I know a lot of people like this where they just complain about this thing that they're faced with, which yes, it's unfair in many instances. I mean, granted, not in his instance. But a lot of people who talk like this, right? Just they're confronted with stuff that's obnoxious, sure, but there's only 
so much of a degree or an extent of solace that you can receive from just complaining, from like just articulating it, which you need. Don't get me wrong, like there's all sorts of pro faces to a problem. I strongly believe complaining and venting is a necessary mandatory component to that for you to be able to quantify what the problem is. But if you find yourself exclusively just doing that, that's your, like, to you that's action. That it's not solving anything. Yet, when it came to the monetary acquisition, at least initially, before everyone got to know you, you were doing fine. I mean, were you, you weren't doing fine. I'm sorry, you've always looked like this, Boogie. I have a credit card with them that I owe $600 on. And on top of that, I still owe $163,000 on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you pull the equity out of the house, get rid of the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and pay off all my debts, I think that puts me at zero dollars. Oh. Yeah, this is the hard part, back to reality. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, gravity makes it harder when you weigh too much. Uh... Another point of contention. <sighs> oh. <sighs> you have even less of an excuse to be this overweight, dude. Like, you had the resource, you had the resources, and you still have it. You just don't really have your shit together. You had the resources, you had the, the, the influence, the means, you just didn't have the willpower or the procedure or the structure to be able to tackle these things that you've once you know, succumb to. Now, let's be honest, obesity, especially when it, like, especially in America, that's inherited. A lot of it is. I, I grew up in a fucking, I'm, I'm still, every single day, I see this? Leftovers, baby. It's leftovers from my leftovers, right? Now, that took a whole year. Like, it took not just that, but also a mental shift, uh, 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 and here, like, I had to build my procedure. It was very difficult. Now there's that degree of, I guess, empathy on my part, right? When it comes to looking at the scenario, especially with his weight. <sighs> but how old is, nearly like, maybe, or almost 40 maybe? That's my guess. We'll probably get to that. You've got no excuse, dude. Look how, look how nice that house is. Look how you have a walk-in shower. You got a separate room for your toilet. You've got a huge ass bathtub. Where you, where you got to play out your wildest fantasy? Hire a nutritionist. <laughs> Not now, you're b broke. But before, when you had the chance. Oh. No! <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Duct tape. It's a band aid on a leaky faucet. Yeah, spent. What? You're at. Now? Okay, but you had, you always had this ability to, and now that you don't have any money, you're now wanting to choose a solution that's not even as good as what you could have done? Like, like, the, disregarding skin removal being not really the best solution in this scenario, you choose to do it now versus back then. Like, regardless of whether or not it's bad, you choose it to, to do it when you have no money, I have two meat curtains. There's a second one. I have two glorious meat curtains. I don't like showing it to people and people don't like seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. We're in your, this is a documentary, we're in your bathroom with you, half naked, where you're explaining. <sighs> okay. Maybe. Hmm. Like he could think it's like a diary, or he just doesn't have any self-awareness, or maybe he's. It's just there's a lot of conflicting. You say one thing and then but you're doing the thing as you say it. I mean, is this, this is probably how it works for everything else. 
this is just one thing. It's probably reflective of ever of how you you're in this situation. All right, whatever. I'm f I keep pa we're four minutes in. I keep pausing it. I have all right. Uh, I'm known online as Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight because there's a lot of famous Steve Williamses, and I'm not one of them, right? <sighs> Different definitions of famous. You nearly have five million. That's that's influential. That's a lot of people. I mean, a lot of if the if, if how we quantify fame is a lot of people knowing you. A lot of people know you, dude. This 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 documentary has less views than you have subscribers. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie to nine eight eight coming at you. My on. ankle on my left leg and head. Um, but that's just the kind of woman I married. So give her some love in the comments section. Give her as much money as I used to make. And it's not exactly enough to make ends meet. Just this is where I spend six to eight hours a day trying to figure out how to save my career. I don't know. It's just something tacky. Like, there's just something so... You're showing us all the... I mean, granted, that's not... The documentary's there to, like, get it, give you an emotion. It's not really reflective of Mike Clum's... Mike, Cl Mike Clum's perspective. But showing us, like, Ah, oh, he's losing money! He can't afford things! As we have multiple, you know, static, you know, <laughs> fucking environmental shots of this house. It's our environment. I'm not gonna get into technical filming, but okay, showing us around your very nice abode. Look, I'm in my mom's basement. I've told the audience. I've told you guys. I've told everybody. This is the center of my world, right here, in this recliner, with my dogs watching television, playing video games on that television. But the other day, <laughs> the audio on this TV started to go out. And whenever it would make like S sounds, it would crackle. And so I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for a hundred bucks. <laughs> and then the next day, the TV stopped crackling. And now I have a hundred dollar sound bar that I don't need. <laughs> Is it a self-esteem thing? It's like he's... It's like he's making fun of himself for everyone else's, like he's having a laugh at you. He knows he's, he's kind of screwed when it comes to this, but like, does, does he just given up? Has he always given up? And has it just, has given up, has giving up worked until it didn't? And is that what we're, we're witnessing right now? Because he's always looked like this. Presumably he's always been like this. It just, there needed to be a, a climax. <laughs> I guess that's not really how it plays. That's not really climactic, guys. This, is the documentary the climax to all this stuff? Or is it merely a symptom? I don't think this will be the end of the Boogie, Boogie Chronicles. Right? The Boogie Chronicles. The Boogie Chronicles. But I know I'm supposed to be budgeting right now, but because that's my TV, because that's my only source of entertainment, because it's the only thing I do, it's one of the only things that bring me peace. Like, I'm like, I have to be able to hear my fucking TV. But that's every addict, right? Like Mitch Hedberg said, I'll just do enough heroin. And then he like, <laughs> OD'd on heroin, right? Hmm. So he, he classifies it as an addiction, which yes. I mean, he's not talking about food addiction, talking about which, yes, you could technically consider that, especially a lifestyle to be an addiction. But it's kind of expected, I guess Boogie would probably use it in the cop-out way, in a way that would uh, seem to say seemingly absolve him of his own actions. Well, we'll look out for that. We'll keep an eye out for that. So I guess every addict tries to manage the addiction, but I don't know, man. Immediately. Every addict tries to manage that. I'm an addict. This is the best that I can do. Immediate, like I, I paused it and then a second, okay. All right. You do know. <coughs> we all, we all know. Dude, I spent a lot of stuff on, a lot of money on stuff. But you know where a lot of the money went? And like it felt really compulsive at the time. I am a former sex worker escort, and Boogie2988 was one of my clients. Okay. 
few problems. I mean, okay, does it really need to be said? It's not the sex work. You spent nearly a quarter... You're just, like... Like, compulsion is, is yeah, that's, that's exactly right, because... I know there's nothing wrong with sex work. There's no, nothing wrong with seeking it out. There's nothing wrong with providing it. But, like... Would you rather go to the, this, like, if you're hungry, right, and you're not so necessarily picky, I can't even say picky, right? Everything's gouged in America, right? So that same amount you'd spend in America, you could probably spend a fraction somewhere else. <laughs> but I imagine, like, you'd, the most in this, like, the most you'd spend is just the, on the plane ticket. But I'm guessing because, you know, it's kind of hard to fucking to the to the airport, and then in the seat. I don't know if the seat. You probably you know allocate more budget to a larger seat, but that's a waste of. This does that really need to be said? Why am I? Why are we stopping on this point? <clears throat> Is it just because it's so primal? Because it's so archaic. It's not really the sex work. It's the amount. From LA, and I get a message on this website. You can probably guess which one from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie. Come on, mercy, my cub, my clum, mercy. What? <laughs> like this was supposed to be an execution, not a, not a, not a mutilation. <laughs> If you want any dirt on it, like, <clears throat> just ask someone they've been intimate with. <clears throat> I mean, we're, we're, we're six minutes in. <laughs> and Mike Cobb was going for the kill shot. I took women on vacations, and I took them out to fancy dinners, and I took them to, like, Disneyland and shit. Oh, but <laughs> I'm just having, I'm just, like, I'm not trying to hurt your, it's just fun. It's just funny. I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. He bought me dinner. He got me a purse that we were talking about over messages. And he got me a couple gift cards. And he spent well over 5000 on just that night. You know the rules. The rules are we're going to go out and eat. We're going to have dinner. Maybe we're going to fuck. <laughs> the rules. Go out to dinner. Go to eat. Maybe fuck. We're gonna f*** up. You kind of make it hard to feel bad. Okay. Mike comes doing that for... It's not Mike. He's show, he is showing us, but he's dramatizing it, so it makes it seem like it's even more bad. <clears throat> it's a bit... I want to say glorifying? Sensationalizing. Yes. Enjoy a nice... Words. So he was really funny, you can definitely tell he was nervous, um, he did eat a lot of food, I'm pretty sure he got two entrees, which was very unique. <laughs> oh, he ate a lot? It's pretty out of the box. Is it? This is America. One third of the population eats too much. And it's probably gonna be like... <laughs> More than that, within like a few years. Corruption, it's, you can't really be surprised. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. Stop saying it like that. I get it. We all like to go around and we all like to fuck. We all like to fuck beautiful women. I don't know, I just like to get my rocks off. All right, all right. Did, did Mike come ask you a, a controversial, was he just like, Boogie? Have you ever seen Boogie Nights? The women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA tens. With sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tens and I think that's cool. Okay. It's like locker room dude talk. Playing into that superficial criteria. 
<sighs> I don't know. It's just he's. I can't say anything. Everyone has their own preference. Everyone has their own what they consider to be attractive. It's just with Boogie when he says those things, you kind of just want to. Like, dude, come on. It's lack of self awareness. It's not. Come on, like. I don't. Boogie's really not too different from. What is it? Average, your average person, really? It's like. It's just we can see it. It's it's projected to us through the power of the internet. So of course, it, like all of his mistakes, no, these aren't mis mistakes. His his blemishes, his his failings, his care. It's gonna be like exemplified tenfold, of course. It is very entertaining, though. Like this is this is this is excellent. We got back to the hotel and. I do regret to say that I slept with Boogie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. It took me a lot of time to find a stick. No, that's too easy. That's, that's low hanging fruit, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> I am now married with two kids, and Sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Yeah, one of the reasons. Come on. Like, if you've been with Boogie, you've been with other people who are probably worse. But... I don't have any sympathy for this person either. Sorry. Is that sexist to me? Sure. Is that womanizing to me? Sure. I don't really care. Um, I'm a 48-year-old man. I never got to fuck a model. This let me fuck a couple of models, is that wrong? He's nearly 50! Fuck. Damn. Like, people... People don't change for the better. People don't. Like, it's... They... Life is all about... You just feel something, and then you manifest those feelings through your actions. To most people, that's the default of, of existence to humans, right? It is incumbent upon us as, in, as individuals to push ourselves away from our, our primitive, evil, biological nature. What we're seeing is just sheer compulsion, sheer glutton, right? Because he's in a position where he was able to indulge. I'm not surprised by any of this. <clears throat> like, this isn't out of the box. This isn't, like... Super ridiculous, crazy, like, Chris Chan, like, granted, we're, all, we're only eight minutes in, so, you know. Uh, but then it's window shopping, right? Like any other meat market like Tinder, you kind of scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you. I think this girl's really cute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for, but there's nothing wrong with that. So I deserve to go to Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl. You saying you're not down with the thickness, Boogie? You saying you don't boogie with the thickness? Boogie? Uh, there, <clears throat> I'd say that's just Americanism. You deserve it? Why? Because you have money? Because you found a way to cheese the system? The system that was designed specifically to deprive people and make it so that a few people can cheese it and make lots and lots of money with very little amount of effort, right? The fact that someone who's this, like, someone like Boogie is able to make as much money as he did in the modern day, and you believe that you deserve it. Why? Because you found a way to win? at this thing that humans built that's supposed to be intrinsically unfair and that's what yeah i don't <clears throat> that is more so <sighs> he's american come on arkansas man if i had that money back that would be half of my mortgage right now okay it's not about work it's not about ability it's not about talent not about skill like some this is an entire documentary made about somebody who made Millions of dollars from playing video games online. Like, what did you expect? D is, does this sh really shock you? How can anything shock you? Like, if you've existed for more than, like, a year. <laughs> I'm 
kidding. Infants don't know that there's the Holocaust exact happened. Point is, if you pay attention, you can pick up very quickly that nothing makes sense. Everything is mindless nonsense. Everything. Like, people are just flailing around in this, this cosmic expanse, making stuff up so they can feel good about it. When I see something like this, I don't... I'm not surprised. I'm not taken aback by witnessing someone's immense ineptitude while also succeeding or having been successful. I'm, I'm, I'm in my mom's basement. I know how much these things mean to you. What's it like to have to sell them to be able to live? So selling off these things kind of sucks because I've been playing Magic for 30 years and some of the cards in this box I opened back in 1994. I opened them in like 96 and I've held on to them ever since. And that's a, like, they're a piece of my childhood. They're a piece of my history. I thought I was gonna get buried with this stuff. This is, this is my stuff. This is me, this is part of me. And uh, I made some money off of YouTube last month, but I did not make enough without a sponsor or something like that. I just, I'm not making enough. So we're gonna go to the game shop, but this is gonna keep me from going out on the, uh, on the streets, right? Like this is gonna keep me in a house. So, damn, you still made nearly three grand off YouTube? Dude. <sighs> like, opportunity, I'm guessing he just doesn't see the opportunities? Like, again, you can't, I mean, does this, is this really so far fetched? Like, how he's been dealing with all this stuff because, yeah, like the money stuff and it's continuously compounding because he just doesn't have this, the awareness. You're still making three grand a month? Off your, you, Jesus. This is gonna keep me from going out on the, uh, on the streets, right? Like this is gonna keep me in a house, so. It's gonna keep you in that house. It's gonna keep you in that giant suburban nightmare fuel. Firstly, why would you want to, if you have that money, why would you, why would you live there? Secondly, three grand? There's people who live considerably less, who are way more frugal, who have their shit more together, and they have less than you. And here you are, complaining, but you don't have enough money to sustain your, your exorbitant lifestyle. Your grossly negligent lifestyle, dude. This is you. It's bittersweet. I think he would find it bittersweet. He would have wished I'd, I had spent my money. And make a, make a documentary about that, the process of that. I'd watch that. I'm selling magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'm selling my poop. I'm selling my bath water. I'm selling my body. I'm selling my meat rolls. I was trying to think of what he calls his stomach. What was it that he called? Two glorious meat curtains. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling that on OnlyFans. Okay, so this month I need from you about $1,000 to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like $1,000 for the stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. There's a city of traders in there. Well. I could do 200 a piece on this. What? Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Those Good took lord, that tank. took a beating. <laughs> these are reserved list cards, Glenn. Yeah. They're not going anywhere but up. Okay. Well, you say that, but the dual lands went down. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's the price. <laughs> Glenn. Uh, Glenn. Dog. Dogs. What's paying for this? Shit, you're paying me back on my hair. <laughs> that don't hurt. A good question, Clum. Also, dick move, Boogie. A boogie to the left, I borrow some cash. A boogie to the right, buy me a Big Mac. You pay more than just the time price when creating a boogie documentary.
we require more sacrifice. Yeah, we all look the same in a game shop. It's because we're fucking outcasts. We're in a kind of small town. We're fucking autistic as shit. We're awkward around women. We're awkward around people. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. <sighs> Bro, if all those things are perturbing you, dude, like, fix it. Improve. Change things. Instead of just, you know, saying it's, it's sh And damn, that's the way it is. Okay, things are that way. But like, <clears throat> if you can make over a million dollars off of playing video games on the internet, you could probably handle these things. You'd think, right? In fact, it would make that thing would allow you to make it a little bit easier to handle these other things. But no, it's not social outcast. Magic the Gathering, three dollars. No rolls. I'm looking at all the shit I need to sell, and I'm surrounded by all the shit that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff, and it's hard to not think about what a fuck up I am. But that's why I go to the arcade, that's why I go to Play Magic, that's why I have my friends over. Oh my God. Fix. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Just, you're distracting yourself. Fix it. At the time at which you're sitting on your, you know, you're, you're sinking into your couch watching probably hentai or something. Like, ha like just turn it off. Be like, Sh I'll change my schedule now. Maybe I'll work up, wake up, work out, stick to a procedure, eat different food, hire the right people. Dogs. Instead of making endless excuses. I know, I know, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, watching, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a boogie documentary. Oh, you, you eat your poop. I can't let you stick your tongue in my mouth. Because for just a few hours, I'm not that fuck up from YouTube. I'm just Steve Williams. I'm just me. Oh, this is this is my Saturday night crew. We get together every Saturday. We eat pizza. We play magic. We play board games. We do Smash Brothers. <laughs> magic the Gathering. This is my crack. This is my cocaine. I met him at the magic shop. I met him in the magic shop. Now him, I met at the magic shop. This guy I met at the magic shop. Yep. This guy I met uh, at the magic shop. This guy I met because he was a roommate with a friend I met at the magic shop. And this guy I met at the Taco Bell next to the magic shop. And this guy I met at Taco Bell. Okay, so I have a million dollar question for you guys. Every Saturday we get together. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order, what? Pizza, chicken fingers, tacos. Those are the things I normally get us, right? Like, I normally spend like a hundred, $150 every Saturday like fetus and like I showed them my bank books today and I'm not like I've never wanted to burden you guys with this but like I'm at a point where saving $300 a month would be useful well I guess you can kind of understand when you look at all the factors right if you see humans sort of just as animals <clears throat> right that are just reactionary to their environment all of this makes sense. Look what he, how, what he has, how he's gotten it, who he is, the type of people that he surrounds himself with, the stuff that he does every day with those same people. They kind of look like him. They all struggle with their own, these particular uh, insecurities. I want to say being fat, and it's, it's, it's just a, like it's hard, it's hard. Right, and it's sort of like a, you're succumbing to like a substance. That's kind of what it's like. It's, it's like drug addiction. Except kind of more difficult in some ways because you need food, right? You could go through your life without smoking a joint or smoking cigarettes or drinking. But you have to find a way to moderate your food intake, especially when you're living in a mindless, backwards, disgusting, evil corporate empire where every facet of life is monetized, where all of the food is jammed with disgusting, addictive, you know, artificial, mindless nonsense that's supposed to make people look like this. This is intentional. That's on purpose. From people who are in positions of, you know, influence and power and have built these systems the way that they, they run. So it makes sense, right? So that's why I'm able to... There's the side of what's been given to you and then the side of the personal input, right? I don't think you can, in his sense, you can't just look specifically, like, there's gotta be an underlying mental thing here. Like, the way that he's raised, certain things that he's gone through. 
he's clearly just been fixed to this way he's been doing his living his life this whole time. And I imagine it was exacerbated, what, over a decade ago? It started in 2006 on YouTube? I imagine it made even worse when he had access to monetary acquisition, immense amounts, with the type of thing that he's doing, right? He didn't really have to change himself. He didn't really have to adjust his... He had to change things in accordance to this thing, but he liked the thing. And it worked in accordance to his everyday lifestyle. So, yes, accountability, but don't ignore the environment. Don't ignore the, the circumstances or the context or how things ended up the way they are. We've been telling you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't get me wrong. I like having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. But we've, I mean, we've definitely said it throughout the years. Like, you don't have I, to feed us, but you, you, you do it anyway, so. When are we going to start bringing girlfriends around? Also, when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around that aren't hookers? No, don't just, don't just move on. Right there, you just, they reflected a problem to you. They said, hey, this thing that you're doing that's eating into your finances, like everything else, you don't got to do this. And we told you this multiple times, and then you just moved on. That's the personal accountability part. Or maybe that's motivated by the environment. I don't know. Let's not get into... Point is, he just... What's the point of complaining? Like, that only serves so much. You need the action for the complaining to serve its use. Because the complaining is the quantification of the problem. And then the action is the solution to that. But if you just disregard as if like that's entirely out of your... There's nothing that will change. Nothing. So, theoretically, Mike's cum has unlimited amounts of material to make... <laughs> make a whole doc... Like a Netflix documentary series about this. We're probably gonna see more documentaries. I'm, I'm excited, man. Good, this is good. You did a good job, Mike Clum. This is high quality. Because <laughs> that's all I've brought around for five years. I mean, like, we haven't had, like, legitimate girlfriends over in a long time. You haven't dated... and. In a while. I like that shot. The guy. He looks like the fighter Uncle I have <clears throat> just sitting there. Uncle I have type two. <coughs> just sitting there receiving the boogie. I think he's a good guy, yeah. I think that Boogie's definitely a, a good guy. Uh, he loves his friends and his family and he cares about people a lot and he cares about what people think about him a lot. He's a fun person to be around and to laugh and make jokes with. That's the problem with witness testimony. See, humans only really, for the most part, the only things that are real to them are the things that occur within their sphere, like within their like, purview, so that they can acknowledge it happened. If something, fuck, low power mode. If something, you know, if, they're, if you ask an opinion on, on, on another person that they're familiar with, they're gonna give you their purview. They're gonna give you their experiences. And I've even seen that extend to, like, people sometimes ignoring the way that other people, how they treat other people. Now, granted, you know, I mean, this is just a trail off. But, like, I don't know. Take everything with a grain of salt. Especially the things people have to say about each other. Unless you've seen that reaffirmed in your tangible, you know, environment, you know, then you could, then there's some merit to it. But only until then. You, you gotta see it, see it for yourself. I don't know where's going with that. I think as long as he stops tweeting the n-word, he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> the n-word is just a word. If you guys left, and these cameras weren't rolling, and I was sitting here alone in the dark... You would say specifically that word, and, and, and just that one. What? Like, I've, come on. That's what I meant by this guy's fucking American, dude. I'm American, I've been born and raised. Like, that specific type of humor, targeting this specific demographic, you think that that's a coincidence? You think everyone really wants to say specifically, that? like, growing up, I was constantly, that's, that's a cultural thing. And I said the N word. There's no magic power to it. So say it. Oh no, I'm not gonna say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. You're asking the right questions, Mike Clum. I like his, his expression, like, mm. 
<laughs> like it's uh, you could it's almost pissing him off. <laughs> it's like what the f are you talking about? <laughs> I just want to make fun of specifically this demographic of people. What's wrong? I mean, historically speaking, that's been a recurring theme uniquely specifically to America towards this specific demographic, kind of like anywhere you go in the in the world, right? They all have their demographic of people that they just dislike because other fucking people told them to do it, right? Same way these other people that he's been surrounded by, remember Arkansas, right? The same way all those people he's been surrounded by have normalized this type of, well, this type of attitude towards these type of things. I like offensive humor. I like dark jokes. I say fucked up shit. I think the darker something is, cancer, rape, murder, child abuse, the darker it is, the more important it is to make jokes about it. No, you mean the more typical the, the subject matter of the jokes are that you make. Because this is like bullshit internet humor. You can make fun of anything and you're choosing to make fun of, like you can make fun of those, it's fine. But exclusively those. Does that just mean you have you're not you're not funny and you don't know how to like organically make jokes about? Sh why is he laying like that? Why why is this? It's a it's a good, it's a good frame. I like the fr Mike. You did a shit, man. Good shit, Mike. Good. I like this. Yeah. I feel, I'm sorry you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, that's okay. Alright. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. And, uh, yep, yeah, so fuck her. And now she's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it not? I don't know. Someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. You splay that fucker just right, you can wrap it all around your fingers. You just gotta, you gotta shave real thin. Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most So you answer, you're just not funny. That's the answer. That's why you think that the edginess equates to funny just because it's edgy, right? Just because it's abrasive. Okay. You ever notice it's the same themes? It's the same more vulnerable groups. Make fun of those guys. You can, but just those? What about those guys? What about those guys? What about those guys? Just those guys, because society speaking, it's expected for you not to do it, right? So if you do, it'd be abrasive. Oh. You just miss the, you just don't get it. No, I plan to shoot you, bud. Please. You pointing a gun at me? Yes. Is this what we have to do? Clint Eastwood looking, acting. You don't look like him. But like, this is American. <laughs> Obese guy threatening you outside his suburban home with a, with a revolver, acting like some 80s cop guy. Action hero, like, are you really surprised? It's, it's fun to watch though. Where it really went south is when one guy spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard my sponsors to make me look as bad as possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And uh, eventually they dropped me. Um, no. To make you look as bad as they... You did that, your, if, if all they had to do was search around on the internet and grab a bunch of clips of you doing stuff and then compile it into a list, that's not, that's you. That's other people curating the information on your behalf. You just, they curated the information you don't like about yourself that you displayed. Let's, what's that list? Hold on. Okay. I think we'll, we'll end off with this list, huh? Things accused of boogie in the Reddit. In the Reddit. <clears throat> he abused his wife, supported child abusers, had attraction to minors, mocked racial minorities. I mean, so far we've seen some inklings of that. All these things, lied about Mount Delta, claimed good things, came from the Holocaust. Threatened to kill his own dog. He's trying to death the promoting channel. 
child friendly with parents. Yeah, it's just average scumbag shit. What? Flirting with his friend's widow after his death. Misused Peach to find the personal toys. Yeah. This is just average crappy person stuff. You can't really be surprised by any of this. But, I mean, he's still making three grand a month off of that, off of this, being this. Off of just whatever that is, right? Look at that. See that Captain America shield? <laughs> See, Marvel fans, this is your, this is your representative? Huh. All right. Well, this, we have made it about a third of the way through the documentary. <clears throat> and there's more to come. It's so cold in here. It's so cold. What is up, guys? Boogie29A here, coming at you live through the power of reckless spending. And we're back uh, with this. The Sad Life of Booger, Boogie298. I keep, ca keep calling him Booger. Let us, shit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Meanwhile. Okay. Ready? Is this where I left, Bo? All right. Are you ready? I am ready. Thanks for asking me, Boogie. Are you ready to step back into 1988? You ready to go back to my childhood? Because that's what's behind the star. You know what, do you want to know what this represents to me? What is this? This is everything that was good about my childhood. And when I walk back in here, it's like going back in time, except things aren't completely shitty. That gave us, that gives you a little bit of insight into his life, or at least his mindset, right? maintain, stagnate, go back to the way it was, stay the same, don't improve. I mean, could have just been he didn't handle the changes of life, the inevitable changes, the sequence of life that plays out. I mean, that's, that's understandable. This is the classic. I mean, I even have a Pac-Man tattoo. This is the game I most identify with because it's about a little round guy running through a maze trying to figure shit out, eating everything in sight, and getting chased by ghosts of his past. So I'm basically Pac-Man. I imagine you visualizing it these ways makes it kind of easier to deal. It's sort of like a, a passive confrontation of, of your reality, right? Simply just through the verbal acknowledgement that somehow... <sighs> How many other people have a documentary made about? Like, that's what makes it a little bit harder to, you know, to empathize. It's like you, all sorts of people are in this very situation and they, they you know, they succumb to these types of fault, these, these failings, these, these happenstances. Yet they don't have, you know, access to even nearly a fraction of, of what this person has. Like, he's in a position where he's able to more excessively confront these problems, and he just... <laughs> yeah, Boogie298, coming at you live! I know, it's simple fun. And, uh... I mean, look at the guy, he looks like me. Uh, I, I might have sprained it or broken it or something. I was walking to the bathroom in there, and... There was a loud snap sound and things kind of shifted in one direction. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe and it hurts really badly. It's the fun part about being old and fat. This is mainly a fat thing. I've seen 70 year olds who could do pull-ups. 70 year olds who are ripped and jacked. I, I hate that excuse, dude. Like. Modern technology has allowed us to expand our lives to what, like 70, 80 years old? And throughout all of that, like, the only thing that'll prevent you from maintaining your physique is yourself. Unless some, you know, you succumb to a disease or some ailment or something. But if you eat garbage, do nothing all the time, don't take care of yourself, neglect your health, you're stuck in denial, like, 
this shit compounds and then it gets worse. Your body, it gets older over time. And if you just have more gunk dangling off of it, it's gonna make, like it's gonna accelerate that essentially, or it's gonna make it worse. You think, right? Right, if you weigh more, it puts more weight on, on your knees, yet, you, you know, you get older, and the more you use stuff, it breaks down, but things break down more if there's more pressure on it, there's more stress, you gotta understand, what I'm, you get it. Why am I talking? Boogie's never gonna watch this. You never know. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. You don't know if today is that stroke or heart attack you've been waiting on, or if it's gonna be a healthy day and you feel real good for a change. You never know. He, it's like he's in, he feels like he's entirely at the mercy of circumstance. Which yes, life is a never ending sequence of arbitrary happenstance, but it's like you still have mild trajectory over the outcome of things through personal input. He's just, is that his cope? Shit, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I've heard that a bunch and I, yeah. So I don't know, it could fucking be today. Do I think I'll make 50? Yeah, probably, that's only two years away. Do I think I'll make 60, which is 12 years away? Probably not. You try keto, it worked for me. You gotta try something, Boogie Nights. You gotta try something. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Low testosterone, testicular hypogonadism, sleep apnea, swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow, seboric eczema, chronic back pain, protein in urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. That is everything keeping me alive. We have Losartan, Tramadol, Buprofen, Sertraline, uh... Mike, was that you? <laughs> he shows you the list of medications. Why, why were you startled just then? Was it boogie time? Did I, I deal with back pain? I deal with nightmares? I'm always tired. I don't know the last time I did sleep. Otherwise, if I don't wear this machine at night, when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm actually drowning in my own fat. Yep, sleep apnea. It's exacerbated the more you weigh. So lose the weight! Uh, high blood pressure, history of gastric bypass, intestinal malabsorption, vitamin D sufficiency. More? I, I get it. You're just, all right. Because like most gamers, I hate the sun. Morbid obesity, major depressive disorder, major anxiety disorder, history of diabetes mellitus, blood pulling in veins, varicose veins of the legs with complications, degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral interver intervertebral disc, that means my back don't work so good, history of basal cell carcinoma, that's cancer, and of course I can't breathe so good, so asthma and allergies as well. I had hemorrhoids once. So, it's a waiting game now, and it's just about making the best of it. No! You've made it a waiting, you've already been waiting. And this is what happened because you were just didn't do anything with it. Just enjoy what you got when you got it. Or improve every day. So you can get to a place where you have more things that you enjoy. So you can enjoy those things at a higher capacity than the shit that you had before. Like you, you're in a you're in a a big ass suburban house that you bought from your the amount of money that you made off of your your personal business endeavors online, and you're telling me you can't do anything. You already did something. Just do more. Just. Change things incrementally. You had the foundation, an excellent, solid, firm foundation that you could spring off of, and you just... <laughs> McDonald's. Sometimes that's a chicken quesadilla. I don't want to watch, I don't want to watch you eat, dude. Like, sad eat.
This is an effective documentary. <laughs> it's eliciting, uh... Repulsion? With an air of pity. But more repulsion. I'd say it's like an 85-15 split. <laughs> I wanted to make like a documentary that was generally entertaining. You realize, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. Mike! <laughs> Don't give up now! We're only <laughs> halfway through, Mike! You got it, Mike. The show must go on. You don't let the depression sink in. You... I'm making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time. Because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that exist. It's just like, what the f*** happened to this guy? What the f*** happened to Boogie? You're, dude, you're asking the right questions. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah. <clears throat> like I said before, like, this doesn't just, you know, manif- I mean, I said before, you know, it's, it's more of a normal thing, right? Because of just how wacko, doo-doo humanity is, right? So it's kind of expected for this to be the outcome of a, of a lifetime. Right? We're, we're a mindless, animalistic species. All of us. We're all, we're all animals. We're no different from... We just have a further degree of sentience that allows us to, to formulate sentences, right? And move our thumbs and stuff and grab things and build stuff, right? Like, we want to believe that we're somehow separate from our nature. It's all about emotion, right? You just feel things. And this is how Boogie built his life in a way so that he can feel this particular thing that he believes in, right? Instead of what could be. Now, it's a, it's a whole other question as to how that turned out, right? Did you not have, meet the right people, have the right conversations, did you not go through the right things? The wrong things happened at the wrong times, and did he just, like, not react according to that, accordingly to that? Did the, did the means of which he's, he's, I guess, developed in his life to react to that, right? Has that really ever been acknowledged or refined on his behalf, right? Why do I make the decisions I make? I mean, it's probably a rhetorical question, right? The answer is no, right? Because nearly 50, right? And it's been the same thing every single time. Don't do, don't be like this. Improve every day. Have something to, to work towards that makes you feel good, right? In a way that's not self-destructive like this. This, this is an example of that being facilitated, that self-destruction, right? I mean, had he not succeeded in his career, it probably would have been the same thing. We just wouldn't have seen a nice documentary about it. I don't know, man. What the fuck happened? Well, he's losing what made people originally like him. It, it could be as simple as just that positive attitude. Why not use your only life to make the lives around you better? Fuck you, it's none of your fucking business. It's my body, it's my choice, eat shit. And over time, in the content, we see this shift where he starts to become more interested in money. I just like making content. I just like talking to a camera. I just like doing cool stuff. I just want ad revenue. I just want YouTube to pay me a fair amount. It's all I've ever wanted, right? And his concerns about money. If I could teach you anything, it's to hold on to the money you get. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And more interested in complaining. I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more grateful to people. Want to come? Thank you. I'm a walking embarrassment, dude. We do. Look at me. I'm disgusting. Better, I'm a piece of shit. I will never function the way you function. It's not possible. Huh. What a contrast, and in many different ways. Was it beforehand he was just playing a character? Huh. Ha! Huh! I mean, that just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. 
I think my window's closing. And if it's not closing already, it's it's already closed. Right, so if there was money to be made in making people feel depressed. Feel depressed. Boogie nights. <laughs> Sorry, Marky Mark. Mark Bark. Busy Mark. F throwing bricks at the Vietnamese. There are plenty of different content creators that have various mental illnesses all over social media. And some just say, it is what it is, and this is what I'm going to do. Boogie tends to be really obsessed with this idea that it's favorable to have people feel sorry for you, and that kind of victim uh, mentality where you can get further in life if uh, people have compassion on you, regardless of the reason they're doing it. I mean, that's not... <clears throat> an entirely illegitimate purview. Like, people can go through their entire lives living that way and still not really be faced with the brunt of their... I mean, everyone goes through stuff. Everyone has to deal with stuff. But let's be honest, man, right? You don't need to really know what you're doing to be able to, you know, sail through life, to be able to get through it, right? Boogie, he's suffering now, right? As a result of a lot of the things that he's done. But he, he's still got you know, to a place in which he's able to live his life somewhat normally, right? Where was I going with this? I look awful. If I look like I've been through hell over the last couple of days. Oh, yeah, because that mentality sometimes is rewarded. If you just play on the right notes, you can get people to, em to, to pity you, to empathize with you. And it, it's a valid, it works sometimes. I, I he probably was, you probably came across that idea somewhere or saw it reflected some somewhere or something. It could be something as small as like a, I don't know, like a song or something or like a lyric. It's like, oh, that gave me perspective. That made me feel a certain emotion in a certain time in a certain way, right? Like personally speaking, I uh, took a single quote from a BoJack episode, right? There was an episode where this intern uh, later on in one of the I don't know, later seasons worked for the, the pink cat lady. Right, it was the intern at their their production company or their management agency, and she comes across the, you talking about the work or every and everything, and he's just like, uh, I had some stuff to do, but I don't know. I have to really feel like, you know, the 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 energy. I have to feel the want the want to work and and to make more. So this is not creatively. It's like something as small as that for me personally. I saw that. I was like, is that how I sound? Because before then, my, at least years and years back, my writing wasn't nearly as procedural, right, when it came to creating things. But then afterwards, it, all it took was a single quote at this certain time and place from this, from a TV, an animated TV show about a, like, a depressed narcissistic horse. Like, that is all it took for me to be like, hmm, maybe I should start a writing schedule. And then I did that. And then I noticed within a few months, literally doing it every single day, meeting a certain, you know, writing criteria, my qual writing quality exponentially improved. So it's, it's the time, I, I could, you know, maybe he was playing a game or something and something happened somewhere that made him feel a certain way about this type of mindset. And he's like, hmm, you know, I could, I could go for that. That, that could work for me. Maybe it was in retali maybe it was in retaliation to like, his failing seeping through the cracks, right? Him constantly making more and more mistakes that were being reflected back to him by his community. Maybe, I don't know. When I frame it this way, it may, almost makes it seem like it's voluntary, which I don't know. I mean, he's self-aware enough to be able to point out what his problems are. Does that mean he's self-aware enough to point out that it's his fault for not really acting upon those, especially in his position? I want... Hmm. Ask the question, Mike Clum. Like Jerry, I ruined my own career. Maybe it was the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's because I... It's been a, a method of... See, it worked! Look, what do you think I'm talking about? We love you, Boogie. Don't be so hard to Taco Truck TV. That's an endorsement from Taco Truck TV. Like, it... <sighs> Pity, right there. Something as small as a few words on a, on a bright little illuminated screen could change his mindset, could, could reinforce something, could deter it's all these, it's all, life's insane, nothing matters. Make money.
because that's what humans believe matters and that's the world we built and right we've rewarded people like this who've learned to traverse the system that humans have built and yes it's a system that's built to be exploited come on if you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars being this type of person making this type of content like what does that say about the system what does that say about monetary acquisition does it really have anything to do with this or this or your abilities your skills really no it really doesn't. It's sort of just how do you acquire perceived value in the eyes of others so that they can give you their money and attention. That's it. That's it. Like, yet we all want to... I don't know what you're doing. You figured out how to do this thing that people created. Therefore, you're better than other people. According, yeah, according to the standard traditional societal norms, Boogie's better than most people. He's made money. And he succeeded, at least at a time. <sighs> Watching this video, should we be angry at Boogie or should we just be angry at humanity? Because <laughs> this is a human. And we are all humans surrounding this human, giving him our attention. What does that say about... Yeah. What do you think I'm doing? I, I think covert narcissism is the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how pathetic I am. You should feel sorry for me. You would never be mean to me because I'm so pathetic, right? Oh, I'm so fat, I'm so weird, I'm so goofy, I'm such an old man, I'm so... I'm such a I grew up in an abusive family, in an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is... is so vulnerable narcissism has a number of characteristics. Uh, a person can be considered a vulnerable narcissist without having them all. So with vulnerable narcissism or covert narcissism, we see pessimism. I feel defeated and confused and lost all the time, every day hypersensitivity to criticism. I can't handle this kind of hate. I can't handle these types of attacks. I can't do it. Reactive anger, so they're not really thinking things through. Is this what I have to do? <laughs> who goes by Boogie 2988 was booked into the jail this morning. Need for admiration. Can I get a round of applause? The self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. A sense of entitlement. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla? Please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free fucking Tesla. Leaving oneself to be special. How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers? One. Nine. Steven uh, Williams! Here. What did I say? Whose fault is this? Like that right there was his reaffirmation of his mindset because it's been reaffirmed to him in his in, in the tangible environment. He's making money, he has a following, people are listening to him, yet this is who he is. Did he suddenly change? Has he always been this way? Do you just develop covert narcissism? Whose fault is this? Like, we're all kind of culpable. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like a relationship, right? Did you know? You know, you can't know when going into it. But while you're going through it, you're, the more time that you spend associated to this, the less sympathy that you get. Especially the more that you get screwed, right? The more check marks, right, of, of bad crap that people do to each other that you can acknowledge, yet, I mean, clearly it's, it's affected as, he's got a documentary on him that's, retaining is you know it's, there's clearly been ramifications for his decisions but like what does it say about everything and everyone if he got there in the first place if he got to a place in which we've all supported and agreed with the things that he, he does i'm not this isn't a this isn't a warlord i'm i'm not trying to make it sound super dramatic there's just some guy in you it's just a rando on youtube he made a lot of money that's it who succeeded in his, his career with an internet personality crap like this is this is just humans. Commend to him now uh, to get his viewers back. I don't think he's getting his viewers back. I don't think that's a possibility. I think the only thing to do now is go a different angle. But I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but how do you change yourself? Like viewers are smart. Like they want to see you. They want to see what you're interested in. Viewers are naive. Like, again, did he develop covert narcissism throughout his 
duration as the boogie? Did it just suddenly occur? And people were like, something, oh. Like, <clears throat> how do you think it works for like abusive relationships? Hmm? Despite all these glaring issues, people still... Now, Grant, like, he's still making three $3,000 a month, right? Like, he's done the damage from what it used to be, but the point is, like, if he just changed, like, he, he his downfall is entirely his own, but if he were to change things, even just slightly, he'll be... He, like, he's gone down the rabbit hole, so that, realistically, that change is probably never gonna happen. The point is, say if randomly he woke up one day, all right, no more boogieing. He just like changes things. Okay, he could like, it, it, he, he could still come back and people would still support him. People still are technically support. They're still tuning in and listening to him. If he's making three grand off of YouTube, that's, I don't, like people aren't as sharp and clever as you. Like people, if you present something to someone that makes them feel a certain way, makes them feel an emotion that they react positive to, that they interpret in a, in a positive fashion, right? They're gonna, that's all it takes. You just sell. Like, doesn't matter the quality of the thing you're selling, doesn't matter anything. Just time, place, where, when, who, that's it. Like, if the audience members were as smart as, as they, as they, as, as this guy's pres presuming, then why did this go on for so long? Why does this guy make so much money? Why did he reach almost five million? I don't know. Like, they just want to, Ignore that. D does framing it the other way make you seem like... Like, he, Boogie needs people to get him to where he is so that you know him as the Boogie. Without that, there's nothing. So who's more, resp who's, who's more responsible for that? Yeah. I don't know, you gotta get a job. Maybe in this case, GameStop. That's not true. He can, he's found ways to make money. He just, if he were to go to the right people, there's other ways of making money on the internet. Then. Guys, it's not about right and wrong. It's just random bullshit all happening all at once. The thing that makes another thing happen is just because the thing that happened before it happened. That's it. It's not because that thing was supposed to happen. It just did. And now this is where we are. <laughs> That's a really funny shot, but Mike, you're doing great. I love that. That's a great sleep apnea shot. I love that. He's just, just... There's no God. It doesn't matter. Nice to meet you. My name is Dawn. Dawn, I'm Boogie or Steve. Okay, yeah, yeah. what do you prefer to be called? Honestly, by? probably Steve. Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. You see what I mean? Even Mike... Uh, even Mike's come. He set up Boogie with... The, he just, uh, you're helping him with your career. Sure, you're turning into a show because it's for your documentary. The point is, you you got people. You got people to help you. Ah, oh, mm, boogie. Um, I did work at a small gaming store back in 2006, 2007. I am disabled, uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. Now, the, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile. Should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. This is an iconic clip. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability. I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're gonna have when you approach everything, then you can't and you right. won't. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so okay. I mean. Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? Uh, what would you think his chances are here of getting employment in the next three months? I'm not sure 
When it comes to the felony, we would have to seek cor corporate approval for that sort of charge in order to proceed forward with a candidate. And they would ultimately be the ones to make the decision as to whether or not we would feel comfortable presenting someone like that to our clients. <sighs> you know the funniest thing? Like I said, he doesn't even have to make money working for other people. He's already making like three grand. He just has to find another way to make even more money online. And he could be, he can continue being as awful as he, as he is. And he could still be, you know, live the life that he's satisfied with. <clears throat> Remember, right and wrong really don't mean anything when it comes to the outcome of things. So, granted, it's funny. Like, I totally believe he deserves, right, having to play through this purview that's granted to him, right, by his, the employers and all that stuff, which sucks that everyone else has to do that, right? But it's just, isn't it? kind of make it more sucky knowing that someone like this didn't really have to do that for given that everyone else, it would be great if nobody would have to do that right and it doesn't really have to be that way but because we live in a dystopian shit fuck, hellscape slave state right but it just makes it even worse knowing that to bypass that you can be that and you'll be you won't be fine right but you'll at least have waived the the you know, the everyday tangible hurdles that, you know, your average person has to deal with, usually involving money. A lot of his problems are compound, you know, they're, they're, he, he's running out of money. But before then, when he had money, this wasn't, this wasn't a problem. It's just his crumbling, his downfall, right? Shocker! Funny enough, from what I hear, Corporations are more lenient on aggravated assault. They'd actually rather have you beat up another, like, employee or something versus, like, stealing. Because <laughs> money is more important than human life. Don't forget. Uh, humans are evil. Hey, Mike. Uh, listen, dude. Uh, I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I I'm not going to walk into some job when I have four million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months? Let's see how things are going. All right? I'll talk to you then. Yeah. He's not, like, he's not wrong. He's been doing it bef It's just he sucks as a person, so he fails at that. But point is, that avenue has always been there for him. And he, and more so than it is for other people because he went through all the crap before then to get himself to where he's now. Like, it's, that's why I say it's not just him. It's reinforced by his environment. He's directly incentivized to view it this way because he's been rewarded as such. Whose fault is that? Every, not, well, we didn't make the, Humans, it's humanity's fault. Go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Yeah, so I mean, things aren't great. Um, people are still mad at me on YouTube. Uh, my view numbers are pretty much close to zero. I'm having trouble breaking 10K on an upload right now. And, uh, oh. not, not everything is bad. I've got at least one good thing going on. Can I show you? Of course you quote Taylor Swift. Love will find you when you least expect it. Yeah, it's found her time and time again. Or unless that's not... Why do we listen to these people? Isn't Taylor Swift notoriously known for failing at all of their relationships because they're a psychopath or something <laughs> yet you're trying to talk to me about how love works <sighs> this is a great example on how mindless love is you'll see it's just nonsense it's just it's it's just crap people make up it's just like crazy it's just drugs it's it's an ingrained opiate check this out so this is uh this is Dazzy. You can call her Des, Desiree. Yep, Desiree. And we've been dating now for months. Couple months, yeah. Yeah.
right. Now, what what can be said is kind of obvious, right? But everything else I said leading up is kind of like, I'm I'm right. <laughs> Like, he, somebody else found him because of his clout, right? I mean, I've heard this part of the story before. Plus, they hinted towards it at the beginning of the documentary, right? With that, uh, the, ah, uh, ah, uh, face, right? Ah, uh, good. Do you want to meet up? Ah. Uh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Point is, it works for this other person that found him. He makes them feel all sorts of crazy things in their brain. So therefore, companionship. Like, just from, just take this from, if anything, take this from the video. Or at least ask this question to yourself, right? Is someone's success, is that really a reflection of what they've achieved? Like, when, when you see someone who's influential, makes a lot of money, yada yada, like, ask yourself, is like, does this really mean anything when it comes to who they are in here and here? If you at least have that in your brain, you'll start to see things a little bit more clearly. You'll notice the, the, the blemishes. Oh, hmm. That's, that's what I thought it took for this, for uh, like the, the required attributes that a person needs to possess in order for them to get to where I believe is what I consider to be success. Has nothing to do with Quality, integrity, skill, ta it's just, just random, mindless bullshit. You have to find a way to just win. Would you consider this winning? I mean, not the other crap, but like this specific, if you were to just narrow it, specifically this, he's found a companion who likes him. Is that winning? If so, not sure what happened. If so, then that just doubts the validity of all of it, of everything. Doubt. It's a very important uh, verb. I don't. I could Google it, but I don't, my phone is. I, I just. I don't know what it was. It was. I oh yeah. When Boogie was. 39 years old, she was 10. When he was 29, she didn't exist. Ripe. I guess it's his energy, his, his curly hair, his glasses. I'm, I must be into nerds. It's, I guess, I don't know. He's just adorable to me. I like him. Or you saw that he's successful online and he's older than you and makes you feel all sorts of crazy feelings that you don't understand. He was going through a lot, and I randomly hit him up on Instagram, and What did I say? The pity angle. He was going through a lot. I was able to see that because I he's established on the internet, and I can see how poorly he's doing. <sighs> yeah, buggy. He just keeps... He just keeps going, so, you know, he's nothing... He's just trying to keep illicit pity. He just keep trying to elicit pity for this. Just a med doctor, science, science. There's a reason for it. Like, if he has access, then why? What did you expect? Somebody this compulsive? Somebody this? I told him that I, you know, I support him and that I'm always here for him and stuff. How many dudes does that happen? Do you see that message? How many dudes does that happen? You tell me. How many how many dudes receive texts like that? How Yeah, boog Boogie? If he didn't have the YouTube, would this No! Retor no, it's rhetorical. No. He wouldn't. But because he won in a certain way, he succeeded. He's being rewarded for, and he's been rewarded for in all sorts of various ways, despite being who he is. Whose fault is that? And so, it, it started from there. People like her, it's their fault. I don't normally respond to fans, but you're fucking hot. You're 20, dude, fresh, fresh meat. I could boogie on that all day. <laughs>
on paper it just doesn't really add up right it doesn't make sense on paper but then practice and in reality there was just something there so it was pretty crazy but i just felt it i felt felt an energy connection to him before i even met him and you felt an energy connection <laughs> come on guys like is ro it's nonsense romance is nonsense come on what does that mean I felt the connection to your roles through the screen. I saw how big the subscriber count was. Really? It's not about who you are. It's what you are to others and how it makes them feel. How they react to the feeling that you elicit from them. That is the only, oh, that's love. That's it. Or, you know, that's how most people are in their relationships. It's never, it's just mindless emotion, that's it. I just realized that has nothing to do with, that's just a tangent. It has nothing to do with booger, with the boogie. I don't know, that's just, that's just how it is. But <clears throat> it's an explanation as to why we're seeing this, right? You guys just sit, I imagine there's all sorts of people that are just like, Whoa! No, that's, dude, that, that does not make any sense. What type of bitch would get with the booger? Like, how does that not make sense? Do you just not pay attention to how humans work? I mean, most people don't. They kind of just make up stuff, right? Kind of like how she just... I was getting an energy connection. I saw him in his internet vlog and his, his 17 chins really turned me on, right? It's a mountain of meat I could <laughs> climb with my thighs. It's a it's an absurd tragedy. That's life. Life is absurd. Uh... The longer we spent talking, I don't know, eventually you just realize we're the same person doing the same thing, living the same lives, just at different stages, and... Dude, dude, clones. Dude, clonesies, twinsies. Like, fucking identical image. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. Like, you just don't have that, that, that support system that you would and the advice that you need. And so, it's just difficult. I don't ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just, I just, maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just, I don't ever want to be alone. And so it's just nice to have company. And... It's just nice to have company. Oh, shit. You're, you're a little more, you're more worthy of pity. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Like... Hmm. Like, they're, they're 20, 20, they're young, right? Like, it's, it's harder to hold. Like, this person's still gonna go through the crap because they've attached themselves to this, the booger. And it will crumble. Because that's just how, like, come on. When you're that type of person, you can't really make anything maintain. <clears throat> At least not effectively. <laughs> or at least in a stable fashion, right? But, and why you t Okay, that's fair, I don't wanna, you're, do you're documenting Mike Klum. I was about to say, like the first, when we start gaining backstory on, on, on the girl, the first thing we start out with is, so I grew up without, no, without any dad and it was hard. It's like, damn, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone. I'm sorry for about life, guys. I'm I'm sorry about all this crap. This is this is this is terrible. <laughs> all right, life is an in, is a is a intrinsically callously indifferent platform where all sorts of violent, grotesque mayhem unfolds in an incessant, never-ending loop. That's so I, I I understand, man. It's just you feel things. And you don't know why you feel those things, and here you are manifesting those feelings through your actions, and this is what it looks like. It's just a human. But still, like, again, you're choosing to... <laughs> you'll, you'll run into the problems eventually, right? But I understand, right? You're still accountable. I help with the dogs. I get him. I get him his water. I, you know, like whatever he wants and requests. You know, I, I just mainly is to take care of him. He takes care of me. So, yeah. Sometimes I, I pick weeds out here. So, cause like it makes it look better. I'm trying to trim down these vines. 
But I'm not doing a good job. I don't do this very much. <sighs> don't just jump into your gender roles. What does Boogie do? How does he take care of you if he's like barely making any money? Isn't that the male gender role? If he's just sitting on his butt all day, like... <sighs> okay. I don't know, it just sucks. <clears throat> Seeing this. I mean, it doesn't suck for her, clearly. Right? It clearly gives them meaning. But, but like, just... Look how, like... Th this is... This person's life, man. All this stuff they're willing to do so that they can maintain this, this thing that they feel. Yet, the thing, the, the stuff that they feel, and you look at the type of person that they feel it for, it's like... Like, try to use logic when explaining that. You can't, because it's a lot, it just, emotions are rational. <laughs> it really sucks, dude. You know, I used to have a theory, Mike, that if you are a 40-year-old man and you have a Snapchat, that means you're a creepy dude. Turns out my theory was right, I have a Snapchat, and I am a creepy dude. Does that absolve you? Stop! Dude, like, his his stomach makes me think of, like, you ever seen those old minivans? Like, the front bumper part? I don't know. People can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. Sexually, we both seem to be having an excellent time. I would say that it's the best I ever had. What? Wow, you are so... <laughs> what? Whoa! He let... Mike, Boogie let you shoot this? Jesus, like that great, like a tour, man. Pull it out, dude. Let's go French New Wave or French French New Rolls, I guess. I guess that's probably um really, huh? Like I I appreciate the artistry, but like it's just weird. It's such a juxtaposition, right? A guy who's so worried about what other people have to like say and think, and I mean it seems to just be kind of sporadic when he cares about what other people think. Clearly, do you? Do you care about what other people think? On one hand, right, it motivates your actions. On the other hand, it motivates your actions. <laughs> I, okay. Like, there's not, I don't, there's not a problem. I'm not having a problem. It's just, it's just, every, nothing makes sense. I want things to make sense, but nothing makes sense. So here I am. Does that make me? Wait, does that make me fucking? Irrational and mindless? Try, like, I understand how nothing makes sense, so why am I trying to understand it? Does that make me ins- Am I insane? Am I cl am I- am I a covert narcissist? Here and I think did you, uh, what are you a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, on YouTube for about 17 years. You've been on YouTube for 17 years. Yeah, four million subscribers. Okay, and this is your my, my your girlfriend, who is much younger than you, is suspiciously. <laughs> she's she's an adult. She's that you know it's never good when you say well she's an adult. <laughs> is, this, is this a sex trafficking situation? <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's just, it's not sex trafficking, it's just modern day hypergamy. Yeah, okay, okay, you can call it sex trafficking, sure, fine. And I hate it when people single us out, I hate it when people like... We're gonna do that though, it's to be expected. You're right, we're different, but... Them, right? Yep. Dude, I hate it when people sing. I hate it when people judge me. I'm gonna sit in the front fucking section of a comedy, comedy event and have a documentary guy come in and record all the 
nuanced and depraved and grotesque aspects of my life that nobody's ever seen before, including me having sex with my girlfriend in the bathtub. But I, but fuck them, right? Like, ugh! I hate what they have to say about me, but screw them. I hate what they have to say about me. But you know what? Screw that. Screw what they have to say about me. I hate it. I hate what they're saying. Screw that, though. I hate it. Screw them. Please don't judge me. Fuck him. He's not manipulating me. I love him for him. He doesn't control me. We're a team. He supports me in everything I do and everything I want. He's, he's my support system. If you've been on YouTube for... Been YouTube for 17 years, she's 20. When did, when did she discover, when did she discover your channel? Kids grow up with YouTube, especially nowadays. When did... Let me get a McCrispy Deluxe. Bro, stop. Stop. No more, no more... F I get it, American, right? You don't know any better, right? And there's fast food joints everywhere and it's addicting and, you know, you have the stupid ass jingles in your head, right? But ba 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 I can go for some McDonald's. Oh, there's the McDonald's right there. Oh, there's McDonald's right there. Oh, there's, where should we go? Let's go to the one of the seven McDonald's we're surrounded by. Corruption. Oh, sorry, no. Free market, sorry. Sorry. My, my mistake. That's not, <sighs> McDonald's is just better. That's why there's locations ever. That's why there's multiple. They're just superior food. They've dominated and they won. That's why they, that's what that. I might lose it all. It's not because you just got to find a way to sell shit to people. It's not, it's not that. It's just, they're just better. And people know what better is. They all crowd around better. Why is Marvel so popular then if it's not good? It's, it's just people aren't, people wouldn't like it if it wasn't good. Shut the Shut up. I'm talking to myself. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Hey, he might just be Dog! What do I think about his dire financial situation? I think it's scary. Yeah, what's so scary about it? Um, that he might lose it all in a day. He might just be homeless one day. But So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay, if we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment, and we're eating McDonald's every day, and that's treating ourselves. They will have to sell the apartment and then live inside your rolls, for those shall keep us warm. We still got 20 minutes left, so. Next time. <clears throat> ah. All right. Hello. We're back to this, to the boogie town. Uh. Recording a little bit later in the day. Excellent. Got arrested. More on that. Story for later. Point of the story is this place for these people. But we're not here to talk about this place or these people. We're here to talk about this person right here. The boogeyman. You have about 20 minutes left. <sighs> You're a very interesting person, Boogie. And thank you for this excellent documentary, Mike Clum. Because this is cool. This is great. Very high quality. Honestly, like high quality visuals. You got all these crazy shots. Look at this. Are we watching a movie right now? It's the story of his life. He ate too much and now he's in debt. He will go homeless. Boogie. So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay? If we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment, and we're eating McDonald's every day, and that's treating ourselves. You gonna be able to handle that? Yeah, you I guess it's that? me, you, Chad, eating McDonald's every day in our small, cute apartment. Because, I mean, I'm hopeful that people will go back to watching us on YouTube. I hope that people will be, I'm hopeful that people will, like, you know, I can go back to live streaming full-time again and do, like, six-hour live streams like every other streamer, and, like, 
grind it out. But I mean, there is a very real possibility that one day I won't be able to do that anymore. And we're going to have to live off of whatever we can. Are you prepared for that? As long as I have you, that's all I need. Come on. But to address what he was saying, he's kind of, he's got a point. Like he can, he could still return. He could resume his, his daily happenings. It's just, if he can successfully convince the audience that he's also kind of, you know, been unfaithful to and screwed over a bunch and has shown who he is on the inside, like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like people are rather malleable. You'd be surprised on the shit that you can get away with, right? I mean, hell, you can go bankrupt and she's like, ah, till the end. Why? Because you feel something? You feel something intense because of random biological bullshit? Like, if she were to watch this documentary, would she be like... I mean, she knows him personally. She probably knows him more intimately than this documentary can display to us. Yet it's, it's, it has not deterred them. But the previous thing, yes. Like, if he finds a way to, I wouldn't say rebuild, but to recapture a sizable audience to be able to consistently consume his content, which, I mean, he already has $3,000 a month. You still have an audience. You just have to find a way to get past all the stupid crap that, that you've done and all the stuff that makes up who you are. Let's be honest, you're not gonna improve. You're not gonna get better. You're not gonna upgrade. So I guess for where you're at, what you probably find more satisfying of a mindset is to sort of just try to define what you can do with where you're at right now that doesn't involve any actual substantial change. Because <clears throat> for you to change, that would be very, very difficult, especially if this is the thing you've been doing your entire goddamn life, right? He's always looked the same. And he's, what is it, 17 years on YouTube? Like, there's still a way, like, people don't, like, it's known. These things are known about you, and it's in a public enough platform, and it's been displayed enough to a specific extent to the point where people are actually able to use that to reflect who you are. And granted, not all the people, not clearly not the returning viewers, clearly it makes no difference, but point is, the, what I mean by people are malleable is you can very accessibly change the, the, the public perspective of really anything. Even if you've gone through all this mindless nonsense, people still know who you are. They will return to hear some of the things that you do or say. You just got to give them that reason. It's not based on who you are, how capable you are, how skilled, how talented. It's just mindless crap. Just get attention, get clicks, get people to watch. This is what, that's what the documentary did. He made eight more videos afterwards that cataloged or at least gave some other additional context. Probably not necessarily context, but probably just his opinion on the stuff that he did. Probably more haphazard, you know, justifications. Have you ever thought about the fact that she's just waiting you out and trying to take your 401k when you die? <laughs> I'm out, I, I, I'm broke. You're broke. I'm broke, yeah. Four million subscribers. <laughs> yeah. You're broke with four million subscribers. That's, what? I mean, I've seen all sorts of channels just die out no matter how, I mean, it makes sense. I've seen all sorts of channels, even people who haven't been doing this stuff. Like, I'd argue that Boogie's in a better position than all those people that I've seen and I'm using as a frame of reference. I bet you he, like everyone else is, they're just doing, their thing, they're constantly, and, and they don't, aren't, you know, drowning in controversy and doing all sorts of crazy crap, but, and, and even still, it, it has no bearing on the outcome of their, you know, view count. Someone like Boogie? I don't know, man. Even though all this stuff happened, he could recoup. I, I think so. And I mean, like, in a social context. Like, I don't, I, you can't really give people that much credit when it comes to holding other people accountable. Because everyone has their own specific priorities as to what they care about. And if you don't infringe upon that, it's as if you've done nothing. It's as a, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. Everything's crazy. Even if he does go broke and has to sell the house, I'm still gonna be by his side. He's the only one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just gonna up and leave him for money. Because money's an issue. Because I love him, and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> what is that illicit laughter from me? What are I... It's probably just, I'm cold and callous and I've had some bad experiences when it comes to this, I guess. I guess that's why I don't... <laughs> Stop. What do you... 
I love him so much and he means so much to me. I mean, I, like, I don't doubt that that's the way that you feel. But this is the thing you feel these feelings for. This is the person. Like, <sighs> given this, can you really take human emotion seriously? Or at least the motivation as to why people feel the things that they feel? A lot of the time, it's just random nonsense. Like, is it ridiculous that you are crying over someone like this? Especially, what, nine months? The amount of time the old documentary shot and you met this person halfway through? You've only known them for a few months? I mean, granted, this person's like 20. <laughs> and they probably are very limited experience in all sorts of different ways. And I can definitely understand that. I've had, I personally, you know, been with people for that long and, you know, you could still feel that extent of, of, of intensity when it comes to the, your feelings. But like, come on, man. It's all about perceived value. How other people view you, how they react to you, it has nothing to do with anything about you. Here's a, just take it this way. Life is about what you are to others and how you can make them feel, right? People are gonna judge your character and your qualities based on how, you know, the emotions you elicit from them. When it comes to a romantic partner, like people don't, it's not about substance, not about depth, not about connection, not even about love. You just find someone who makes you feel intense emotions. That's it, that's it. And that's what we're seeing right here. Like 20 years old, probably, I mean, they, maybe they've had other experiences, but clearly this guy is the one, I mean, you know, we can't use this as a reflection of everything, of how reality works. It's just our, what's being shown to us. But just off of this, you could tell, clearly there's some profound impact that this guy has on this person despite who the guy is, despite the boogeyman, despite what he, who he is. It's just, it's, it's just, it's, cr it's very fascinating, but also profoundly tragic. <laughs> Cause it's like, imagine if that weren't there, like would relationships actually be like about, you know, actually like, would there be more quality relationships if people applied a little bit more rational thinking? Cause if like, if you just took her to the side and be like, hey, have you seen this documentary? <laughs> You're the guy you're sleeping with? Yeah, they, they recorded you in the bathtub with him. You probably consented to that, definitely. But they'll be like, no, rose-tinted glass, but for but it's hard because you just don't know. Like, why? Why this extent of intensity with your feelings when it comes to this particular person? I, I even, again, we haven't even played a minute, and I'm already, it's 10, 10 minutes, I've already been f***ing rambling. I mean, my biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just gonna ruin her life. Then, then improve your, improve yourself. Sorry for, for pausing, but I like that shot. That was a good shot. I really want you to understand how actually sick I am. Like, I don't know if you actually get it. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so fucking sorry for that. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. <laughs> I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. <laughs> There's a cost to everything. This is what, this is the, the payment right here. The suffering you get to face. From your interac inaction, your negligence, not improving. Is this, is this really easier? At the end of it all, saying all this stuff, hey, this is what you're getting into, and I'm sorry. Is that easier than just doing better? I honestly don't think so. Right? The suffering caused from the inaction over in the long run is worse than, well, than just biting the fucking bullet and, and trying harder. Otherwise, you get that. You get reality. Because reality does not care about any of us. Nothing matters. So you are entirely at the mercy of life. So you need to do as best you can to alter the trajectory of the outcome because that is the best that you can do. You just have mild input. That's it. And this person, time and time again, has chosen to not, not do anything to improve their scenario. I mean, granted, monetarily speaking, clearly, it's YouTube. Four million, nearly five million subscribers! Ugh. That's a, that's a, 
like, you're making more than lawyers at that point. <laughs> making more than doctors, you're making... And you just... I'm sorry, but, like, this is real suffering, I'm sorry. But, like, that's what happens. It's the inevitability, inevitability of things. And as a result, you cause another person suffering. Which is great, right? You can't just neglect your own health and have it not affect the people who find you important, right? I've talked to my therapist since me and her have been together about overcoming it. My therapist keeps telling me the same thing. When you learn to love yourself, all these things will fall into place and we just got to teach you those skills. And then I turn to my doctor and I'm like, what do we do? He's like, you've had bypass surgery. You, you lost 200 pounds. What more can I do for you? Get a different therapist. What? Yes, mind sh 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 mindset shift. Love yourself. Now I'm, now I'm skinny. Is that how? I mean, if you're way... It's been a recurring theme of your history that you waste money. You probably waste money on your goddamn therapist as well, right? You probably chose the therapist that makes you feel a certain way, right? Remember, every facet of everything, every industry, everything, it's all monetized, everything. So I guess it makes sense, right, why he'd spend his limited savings on somebody who could reaffirm his delusions to him. You just gotta love yourself. No. You just gotta diet. And not be a piece of shit. I'm like, fix it, dude. Help fix it. And then they're telling me that I'm the one that has to fix it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. That's not a re- that's not an ex- Yes, you do. You know exactly what the fuck's going on. That's not a reason. There's cop-out after cop-out. I've expect- I predicted this in earlier. But still. <sighs> I mean, clearly the documentary is trying to elicit a feeling. You're playing the sad piano, violin stuff. But this is you. You did this. And, and it's worse because it's like when you look at somebody else who has considerably less, you can understand why they would succumb to these, these things. These failings, let's just say. You? What's your... Is it just a lifetime of mindless debauchery? And now... Making his way to the ring, Boogie tonight! Hey, so Mike! I just got off the phone with Keemstar, and he has a boxing event coming up, and he's giving me a slot on the card. We got it! This is 800 pounds in one ring. You want to know how nothing matters? Keemstar is objectively a worse person than Boogie is, right? Boogie's just covert narcissist mindless, has no self-awareness, he's just a, a, a mess emotionally. Keemstar is a sociopath, and it's funny, he's doing way better. Keemstar is doing way better than Boogie. And he probably has more money, he probably has more influence, by being a bigger piece of shit. That's why it's like, I can't really, so looking at someone like Boogie, it's like, I can't really strongly dislike this person, because they're just an idiot. But someone like Keemstar, ooh, that's a bad person right there. People are going to see me win this thing. This is where I turn it all around. Right here. And then you got munted. I saw that. I saw the box. I didn't see. I saw clips. I saw you get munted in the clip that I watched with you. Referee Seamus Dunn stops the contest, and therefore your winner, Wings. My brain got shocked with each one of those. Dude, he destroyed. He came in with a with a with a leaping. Uh, this guy, he trained. You you didn't do shit. He came in with a leaping uppercut, hit you with a left 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 hook, and then you're just look at it. He just keeps slam, punch, punch, punch. Who would have known? Your negligence caused more problems. Also, how would winning a boxing event make you, like, how would that be a comeback? How does that fix all the stupid crap you did before? So that's what I meant. I mean, even the documentary is able to see it, right? This was, the stage was set for, the stage was set for Boogie's comeback. But what is that comeback? Punching somebody on, on, on the internet in a boxing match. Like, why would you consider that a comeback? Would other people consider, I, I, I think they would. So, all the crap that he did before, it doesn't matter? Okay. It doesn't, that was a rhetorical. You guys were here last, I did have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here in this house. 
the problem with that is I spent more than 10,000 getting that fight together. So by the time all that was done, all I did was put that $10,000 back into savings. Boxing lessons. If you took boxing lessons, I couldn't tell. Physical therapy, MRI, meals, hotels. Being in the new relationship is great, but I mean, she can't help pay a $2,200 mortgage. I love the irony of this shot. I love it. Mike, you're doing a really good job. Look at that shot. He's talking to us about his, his financial woes, saying how we can't meet the mortgage, you know, monthly, yet he's got one, two, three, four, five, six retro, original, I think these are original, like, arcade cabinet video games from the 80s. He probably bought them, like, pristine quality. They're all just sitting there on their default, like, screen that gets people to pay. pay. Taking up electricity that costs every, all of it. It's just funny, man. It really is. It's not, it's tragic, right? But, well, it's funny and tragic, right? But, like, that's the answer, dude. It's all around you. It's in the very nice house you're in. It's in the lifestyle that you're living. This is a joke, dude. Life is a joke. For a second. Life in a, is an absurd comedy. Okay, let's go through my monthly bills for a second. My health insurance is 800. I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the car that I drive. I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Well, so everything's gouged in America. Um, granted, you just didn't really have any forethought when it came to any of this, so I can understand it. <clears throat> you lose a lot of money just from living here. That's just how it works. This is not a good place. Uh, you get you pay three times the amount you would in all sorts of other places while you, while getting slightly less quality product. It's all about it goes back to what I say. It's all about selling. You just got to change people's perspective, and you can can sell them anything. It really doesn't. It's it's really not as ethereal as people want to give it credit. Is it's just a, a, a money's a thing that people built so that they can control each other for the most part. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not. Really? Is that why you have to work a full-time job or multiple full-time jobs or multiple jobs and still not have enough to be able to... You're overworking and that doesn't, you know, match the amount that you're receiving? Oh, it's supposed to happen. Ignore that. It's, that's the way. It's just... That's just how it is. Just stop being lazy. Be like Boogie. Go out and make a YouTube channel where you get millions of subscribers and then you're just better than other people, right? Look how much money he has. Look how... Like, I don't know you. I don't know you. So then who, who are you? This is Boogie, I know him. Make money, or you're worthless. And Americans. Diablo 4 came out, I had to buy it. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 came out, I had to buy it. I get it, it was a nerd moment. Diablo 4 came out, I gotta buy it. But Diablo 4 wasn't very... <laughs> do you know what's going on at Blizzard? Or do you... Do you agree, do you consent to their, uh, that behavior? Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. That's $400 for the video games. <sighs> These games you're buying? The freaking full goddamn price AAA mediocre... Tears of the Kingdom is pretty good. Well, it's because it's... Nintendo spends a little bit more time on their shit. But would you... Re I wouldn't pay full price just to play a Nintendo game. They gouge their shit all the time and it never goes down. Yet you're running out of money and you bought Tears of the Kingdom. Just replay Breath of the Wild or, or play it, get, dude, on Steam, there's so many goddamn games that are a billion times better than, than all sorts of Nintendo games that you can get for barely even a fraction of the price of a Nintendo game. You've got no excuse. I just gotta do it. I'm Diablo. I gotta get the starter pack. Which, you paid $90 for Final Fantasy 16. That's clearly not just the base game. Right there. But if you take out all of it. You take it out. All I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions. All I pay for is internet, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. I don't dislike you, Boogie, but go fuck yourself.
what the hell, I know so many people like that, they just want to talk about the, the problem. They just want to vent, they just want to complain. Oh, I gotta do this, I gotta go, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta, oh, blah, blah. Instead of, how can I think of a way of dealing with this? Instead, you just want to complain about the thing. Like, that's not progress. If you do that, you will lose. Unless you make lots of money. Remember, winning, according to humans, is you just gotta make money. That's the only thing. That so, according to people, Boogie's not really much of a loser. He has more money than me. That means I'm a, I'm a loser. According to, to people. So, And yes, according to people. If, if, if I, what I'm saying wasn't, wasn't true, this wouldn't exist. A documentary on some fucking fatty. I'm not making $7,000 a month. And I have no clue how to do it. But you were! You were making way more! But you fucked it up. So there's something I've always wanted to try. There's a lot of research that came out of Europe and now we're doing it here in the United States where psychedelics can help reset certain brains. Of course, that, like he's doing everything that has like, that won't require him to like do something manually. Like go fucking to a gym, use some of the many expenses that put yourself further in debt to do that or to eat less, spend less. If you, like that's crazy. Just a diet would cost less than what you're... Okay. Just, if you're trying to lose weight, like, that's, don't, just don't do any of the stuff this guy's telling you to do. Not to say psychedelics are bad, it's just, you know. People who experience childhood abuse, people who've gone through trauma, people who deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm all of those. <laughs> Me too, excluding the PTSD. Only thing is I've handled my trauma way better than you. Yet look where we are. Look where you are. Look where I am. Isn't it crazy? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty mindless. I, to be honest, I am scared shitless. It's one of the only things I haven't tried yet. So let's give it a shot. You also didn't try dieting or working out or changing yourself for the better. I'm just repeating myself at, the, at this point. Mm. My given name is Ryan Arthur DiLiolio, and I've adopted the name Flaming Star. There's one thing that's undeniable, is that there's always this question about why. Why am I here? Existence. What's really happening? Who am I? I can answer a few of those. Why am I here? Because uh, somebody gave birth to you, a uh, bunch of things lined up in a certain way that cause these other people to create you, and now you exist. Um, existence? Question mark? Is that even a question? What's really happening? What, what's, what, like, in real life? In life? What's happening? Nobody knows. It's just mindless, random crap. There's a, there, it's a, it's a, a universe that abides by a bunch of random rules and then just plays out. That's it. Um, and who am I? Who are you? Shaman. Unless you're asking, like, figuratively speaking, right? Like, philosophically, why am I here? There is no reason. <clears throat> why is a thing that humans created, right? Things just happen. They just play out just because this thing that makes it happen happened and then that thing happens. The explanation, the concept of an explanation is something that humans created. There is no why. Things just are. That's it. There's a how, right? You can figure out how things work, but as to why is it this way, there is none of that. There is no answer to that. That's what happens when you seek out hallucinogenics. It's going to allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is going to come out. Trauma is going to come out. But afterwards, your atoms are going to go back into their original positions. Why not? This is like psychotherapy, like, like psychedelic therapy. That's a legitimate thing. And... I would recommend it if you're in a problematic situation, but why are you going to a goddamn shaman out in the middle of a forest named Some Fire Pete? Was that his name? I don't know. We're all connected. I believe when it. When you get to a certain point of understanding, 
inside your intellect mind that connectivity you realize your hands are basically playing like USB ports so these are the uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding in my hand right now but here we go Yeah, psilocybin tastes like garbage. <laughs> I want to like put it into a tea or something. They don't taste bad. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. You probably just eat too much food and you can't tell the difference. They taste awful. I don't know what you're talking about. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody just says kind of earthy. It tastes like dirt. Like, oh, like a, there's a slight rubberiness to very slight. But like, it's, it's so hard to, dis it's like such a weird, I'm not gonna go into detail. Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the club. May God bless you and be with you on your journey. Feel the incense. Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in, and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels, and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. Excellent way of describing it. Good. Sh so you are aware. You just are selectively aware. That's ex <coughs> what you did just then <clears throat> was self-reflection. It was quantifying the state that you're in, what you experience, what you're feeling. Apply that to other shit. Apply that to your life, your your procedure, your activities, your your schedule, the way the, the way you view the world, everything, and you will like. That's how you improve. You acknowledge, then you act upon. I don't know what to, like. I don't know what to say about you, dude. Like you're cle you clearly are you have a degree of intelligence, which means there's even less of an excuse for you to be in this situation that you are in. I've been balls. I have no clue where the f I am or even who I am, and I don't give a. F I recognize. Uh, he's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go, and we're gonna get to the other side of it. Yeah, he's just figured out how to let go. <laughs> We're gonna make our way through this journey. <laughs> he's gonna get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's gonna get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool too. So what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced which, you had, which basically set up like a defense mechanism for you? Man. Yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. Stewards. People who are like trying to... to, to. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, pr it's pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> yep. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like, they don't, I mean, that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. You just summed up shrooms and just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Remember when I <clears throat> tried, I was sitting in my apartment, I was sort of like a, there's the hallway, it was dark, all the shades were down, the sun was going down, I was tripping. I was looking through, I, there was like a hallway, a dark hallway, which just led to darkness. And in my mind, I saw that, and I sort of like pictured like, the void, right? Sort of like the finality of things, like death. Like going through that would be the end of it. And I was able to look at that, well, you know, on the influence and I was okay. Like I, I looked right down the void and I was just like, I'm okay with this, with things, the way that things are, the way that, that was the experience that I had. I, that's. That was the dumbest shit. 
Oh, and it happened so long ago. <laughs> like, I've just been waiting for the right time to just drop that shit. So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? Out of everything we've seen in this video, like right, what we're seeing right here, like I, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> this is a good thing we're witnessing. Self and like reflection, like he's doing stuff in a, in a calm, peaceful environment. He's just contemplating things in a way that he can't really do it I, I, without the drugs, sure. But I mean, this type of introspection is good. Am I using that word right? It's good. But remember, it means nothing if you don't the next day follow through with it. Oh, well, that's exactly what it is, right? Like, I didn't know what the hell, I don't know how to communicate what I was dealing with or what I was going through and I just, Right, we put on these different faces in order to deal with situations in society. You try to give people what the hell they want. And then you felt like that was the need to make up Francis or other personalities? Yeah. Are you ready to let all that go? Yeah, please, man. Oh my God. This is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. I, <laughs> this is the first time I felt it. That's what psychedelics do. You kind of feel like a warmth. Like you're just okay with everything. You just want to give affection. It's just drugs, man. It's a game, right? <laughs> just let them go, so it's up man. to you to choose. Steven, are you, can you get up? Hello? That's actually kind of scary. Jesus. You're not dead, are you? Fuck. I'm still not sure I'm like really here yet. Another immediately. You wake up and you start drinking soda again. The sec, that's the first thing you did. Remove your respirator. Get that dew in them, in, that, in them loins. Yeah. I don't really want breakfast. That's just, that's a change. It's just all bullshit. Like, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct, it's all a simulation, it's all a... It's a fucking video game. You know, you got the first part right, but no, it is very much real life. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter, but it's real. Um, yeah, no. Uh, the universe is simply here as a matter of happenstance and our existence is very much the same. We find ourselves as feeling emotional creatures in a callously indifferent environment where we have to derive meaning despite there being objectively no meeting in the universe. That's something we make up. It's, it's not fake, it's real, right? The things that people feel, like the things that happen are real, the things that people feel are real to them, but none of it matters. Anything goes, anything happens, anything usually does happen. And you'll realize pretty soon that there is also a cost to meaning, despite it being sort of a intrinsic necessity to life. Because with everything that you find important, Right, everything that comes to needs to go, right? It's really messed up, man. Life is really, really fucked up. And I, I like, there are not words to, to quantify how grotesque reality is. However bad you think it is, it is considerably worse. Way worse in a way that we can't even comprehend, right? The only thing that's real to us is what we experience for the most part. Everything else is sort of by proxy if it's not directly happening to us. You know when you die, I think I died last night. I physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from. And I think, uh, I think I'm still in it. Except I'm also in this physical corporal body 
but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it and god damn it I feel like I'm in control I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first fucking time yeah shrooms are heavy dude actually I had some and I made the excellent decision to watch a Black Mirror episode <laughs> and I hadn't watched it but I hadn't seen that at that time I saw the Christmas special episode it fucked me up man sitting just cradled in my bed for like for like an hour trying to calm myself down just like <laughs> it wasn't real that's kind of how it went The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think about me, it's all so incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. I think I'm gonna enjoy making YouTube videos again. I think I'm gonna enjoy live streaming again. Try to enjoy going to the gym. Hmm, I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? We need. Don't disagree with me on that, Alexa. Alexa, go to the gym. It just, it's like, no, I disagree. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? I'm looking to 988 coming at your office. Alexa, you dare disobey me? Go to the gym. Sorry, I don't know that one. Get to the power. When I make a video, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people watch. That is still my dream job. Everybody falls off. That's part of the deal. On a channel that makes, say if you upload twice a week and you get 25,000, right? Or 25,000 views per video, right? Two videos each week, 200,000 views in a single month. Right there, that's over, it's like, a, it's over like $1,000 in terms of ad revenue on what you've made, right? Excluding other means of monetizing your content, which you are, can absolutely do, especially with your brand. Are you kidding me? Dude, like, turn, put on that business hat. You will very easily be, you're, in a, you're already in a very, in a very nice position, all right? He had tons and tons he, of You start off as a nobody, and for a short period of time, you're a somebody, and then that star burns out like every star does. I was lucky enough to get hit by lightning. I was lucky enough to get to live my dream. That essentially summarizes his mindset. This stuff happened to me. I got lucky that I got put in this position to do these things. Oh man, that was you. You brought yourself up, you brought yourself down. I'll be gone one day too. But for one brief moment, we, we got an opportunity to shine really bright. Excellent documentary. Very good. Honestly. Mike Klum. Seriously. Like, if you do more of this, I will very much be nearby to, to check out anything that you make next. Very good. And this is the first thing on the cha on this on this website that you got, right? Now, final thoughts about Boogie, I guess. Nothing that, for the most part, hasn't already been acknowledged. Uh, you can alter the, the trajectory of things, right? You don't have full input in how life plays out, but you can alter a few, you know, specific variables to hedge your bets the best that you can. Now you always need to, in my opinion, always work towards different ways to be able to have the most input on those variables, let's just say. This is an example of someone who felt like they just didn't have any there's nothing they could have done and everything was entirely reactionary. I want you to know that that's not true. You, and if, if what he's saying is true, which it's not, it's everyone's screwed, right? With what I'm saying, you have a chance. You have a, you have a chance to be able to try to get to this place or this thing in your mind if you have an image or whatever, to be able to try to manifest it within tan tangible reality. And there are specific, now, as to how, like that's all just, I'm still figuring that out, right? I have this idea of what I think I what I want my life to be in my head and I'm trying my absolute hardest to hedge my bets in the right way 
to be able to enable that for myself, right? Clearly, my priorities have not necessarily been in the right place if I'm still where, I'm, where I am. But one thing he did say is, right, it's a game. Life is a video game. Not in the simulation sense, but in the terms of, like, there's progress, there's, you start out with a character with a bunch of attributes, you gotta go through a bunch of trials and tests, things that happen, you take damage, you, you, you give damage, and you just experience until it's over. So there is some solace to be derived from the slight degree of control you have over the outcome of circumstance. But for the most part, it is circumstance. Right. If you ever see this boogie, I wish you nothing but the best. I want you to do better. You don't seem like a bad person. You just seem like you're incredibly emotionally unintelligent. And you kind of just lie to yourself and say that there's nothing you can do. <clears throat> but you aren't... Granted, a lot of your health stuff is probably irreversible in a lot of ways. But you still have a chance to be able to turn things around. It's never too late. Never too late to improve, never too late to start something, never too late to make progress. You want to know what's when it's too late? When you're dead. But that's the cool thing about death, you won't even notice it. You're too busy being dead, not existing. Well, until next time. <laughs>